Unlike people from many other countries, Australians have an almost unlimited access to the seafront, which is reserved as public property. Beach use is taken for granted. It's every Australian's right. But with that privilege comes the responsibility to preserve the beach as a valuable resource. Responsible coastal management is one of the most rewarding activities that can be undertaken by local authorities. Beaches are one of Queensland's prime resources. They cover a very small percentage of the total land area, and yet they're regularly used by many of the 80% of our population who live within 75 kilometres of the beach. Queensland's beaches are a prime tourist attraction, earning valuable income for large sections of the population. However, our beaches badly need care and attention if they're to survive for future generations. To know how to protect beaches, we need to know how they work and what they do. One of the most noticeable features of a beach system are healthy, well-vegetated sand dunes. When vegetation is not present on the dune, it's an indication that something is very wrong. If the protective vegetative cover is not there, then wind erosion occurs. A major element in beach preservation is the presence of sand dunes backing the beach. Dunes are inherently flexible. They're constantly being changed by the action of wind and water. Sand movement caused by wave action and ocean currents is a part of normal open sandy coastline behavior. The beach profile is in equilibrium with the existing wave conditions. Wave action removes sand from the beach during extreme weather conditions. This sand accumulates offshore in sandbars which ultimately break the force of the waves, releasing much of their energy before they reach the shore. This helps to reduce or stop further beach erosion. These drawings show how a beach dune system works. This is a typical beach dune profile under normal wave conditions. During storm conditions, sand is eroded from the beach and dune and deposited in offshore bars. When calmer weather returns, sand is transported landward again. Wind action blows dry sand off the frontal dunes into the high dune system. Once dunes have been reformed, a sand reservoir is available again to supply the beach with sand during periods of severe erosion. The need is now recognized to allow for adequate buffer zones between developments and the seaward toe of the frontal dune so that coastal fluctuations can occur without the requirement for expensive property protection structures. These property protection structures, such as rock walls and revetments, can often result in the total loss of the beach, as wave energy is reflected, eroding the sand in front of the wall more easily and thereby lowering the level of the beach. We simply can't afford such losses. The management of coastal buffer zones is important so that windblown sand is not transported across the dune area to a position where it is no longer available to the active beach system. Dune stability is achieved through the presence of self-sustaining vegetative cover which traps and holds windblown sand. The reduction of wind velocities at the sand surface prevents sand grains from being picked up and transported inland. Managers of coastal dune areas, whether private landowners or local authorities, will sometimes encounter degraded or damaged dune areas. Dune vegetation may have been destroyed by a range of natural causes or by human activities such as uncontrolled pedestrian traffic, damage caused by the very people who come to enjoy the beach, or by irresponsible driving of vehicles on vegetated dunes. An eroded dune system is a major challenge and the right questions need to be asked from the outset before regeneration efforts begin. Is the existing dune shape or topography suitable for stabilizing and revegetation? 
will the end result form an effective barrier against wave attack and prevent overtopping during storm conditions. The shape of the dune areas can be recontoured or built up by mechanical means or by wind action. Where wind action is going to be utilised, then some manipulation of the natural force is needed. Brush and drift fences are placed in strategic locations to control where sand build-up is to take place. Drift fences formed of plastic mesh attached to strands of wire are particularly effective at trapping wind-blown sand. However, the plastic mesh must be semi-permeable and a porosity of 40 to 60 percent is the most suitable. Wind-blown sand settles in the vicinity of the fence as the wind velocity drops. Some hind dune areas need to be reshaped to give suitable slopes for replanting operations. With the dune shape recontoured, then planting and stabilisation can proceed. The exposure and position of the dune in relation to the beach dictates planting materials and the type of sand stabilisation procedures required. Dune species suitable for growing on the frontal dune areas need to be able to withstand strong winds, salty spray, sand blast and being covered with sand. Suitable species include sand spinifex grass, goat's foot and beech bean. Sand spinifex is very important and can be readily established using seed, stolen tip cuttings and sprigs. Stabilisation of sand on exposed frontal dunes is best achieved using brush matting. Hind dune areas which are more protected may be more economically stabilised using a bitumen-based emulsion, mulch or other spray-on sand binding chemicals. Fertilisation hastens plant establishment, but re-vegetated areas have surprisingly low maintenance requirements if protected from physical damage. Some plants, such as casuarinas, are able to obtain nitrogen from a symbiotic relationship with microorganisms living in nodules on their roots. Strategic use of fertilizer can be a very effective tool in any dune management program. For example, vegetation can be fertilized after heavy recreational usage so that it recovers quickly or so that more rapid growth of new plants can be achieved. Recreational demands on coastal dune areas have grown rapidly in recent years due to the highly mobile and expanding population. This increases stress on these sensitive areas. The success of dune management programs also depends on what provisions are made to cater for both access for pedestrians and vehicles alongside the need to preserve environmentally sensitive and significant dunal areas. Dune protection works, which can be used in management of dune areas, include fencing to control pedestrian traffic. Fencing should be made of specially selected materials which will stand up to the harsh environment. Pressure treated timber posts are an advantage with rails and plastic coated wire mesh if required. Beach access tracks for vehicles and pedestrians usually require surface treatment to prevent wind erosion, sand displacement and erosion by water runoff. Board and chain walkways are effective and can be lifted above wind-blown sand or moved if they're threatened by wave erosion. In cases where heavy usage is expected, pine bark chips can be distributed on bare sand along the pathway. Porous geotextile fabric can be used below such organic materials to prevent the bark from being pushed into the sand. Timber roadways can also be provided for vehicles to prevent the lowering of dune levels and provide safe, easy access to the beach. Signs are valuable in directing the public and in gaining the support of beach users in the care of dune areas. 
Management plans must make provision for regular inspection and repair because dune protection works need to be well maintained if they're to remain effective. Maintenance works which are often required include replacement of damaged boards on board and chain access tracks, replacement of rusted wire and replacement of fencing rails. Fencing wire also needs to be well strained as loose and sagging wire offers little restraint to people attempting to climb through or over fences which have been erected to protect the dunes. Dune protection works must be seen as expendable. In exposed frontal dune areas, neither fences nor vegetation will survive wave attack. Fences are replaceable, the dunes are not. Well, we've covered the main aspects of establishing and maintaining a stable dune system. But I suppose you're now asking, does it really work? Well, to answer that question, have a look at this typical eroded dune system. Once much of South Stradbroke Island was like this due to a reduction in the effectiveness of the vegetative cover. The dunes had little vegetation left and sand was steadily moving inland. There was nothing to hold it here in the frontal dune system. Such sand losses contributed to coastal recession and lowering of dune levels increased the risk of overtopping. The whole beach system was under threat. A lot of work has been done in this area. Dunes have been recontoured and planted with various species such as sand spinifex grass. The hind dune areas were stabilised using a combination of brush matting and mulches. Selected trees, ground cover and shrubs were planted in the appropriate areas. A fertilising program was carried out to stimulate the remnant patches of existing vegetation and to encourage rapid growth in the new plants. Dune protection works including fencing and access tracks were installed and provision made to integrate recreation areas within this coastal zone. The final result is here to see a healthy, well vegetated stable dune system. It'll be here for generations to come. Nice view, isn't it? Well worth working for.